In this video, we're talking about the kinetic molecular theory of gases. What this is, is basically an attempt to explain the behavior of, of gases. It's a theory. And it's really what it is, it's a picture that we're trying to draw in your minds of, of how gases behave, of why they behave, rather, um, the way that they do. It's a useful picture, and some of it even uh, applies partially to liquids and even solids. But these are gases we're talking about. So <clears throat> kinetic molecular theory has five parts. Now, you don't have to remember or memorize each part verbatim, but you should understand what they say. So the first um, part of the kinetic, kinetic molecular theory says that in a gas, the gas is made up of little tiny particles, very small particles. And these are moving all the time, constant motion. And they're moving in really in high speeds, relatively high speeds, in random directions. So. In this picture here, um, this little dot represents a particle of gas. The arrows represent their, their you know, direction and speed. The bigger the, the arrow, the faster they're moving. Right? And this, you know, the different size arrows represent how it really um, is in a gas. There's a distribution, we say, of speeds. When you have a, a gas, now a good picture to have of a gas is maybe a, a balloon or even better, a, a metal cylinder filled of gas, like maybe helium gas, something like that. And in that gas, the, the particles are really small, moving in random directions at high speeds, and, and they're not all moving at the same speed. Some of them are moving slower, some of them are moving faster, and there's an average speed too. That's, that's the first part. The second part <clears throat> says that gas particles do not attract each other. There's no interaction as no matter how close they come to each other. Now, if they hit each other, sure, of course, they'll bounce off. But if this particle of gas is going this way, and this is going this way, no matter how close they come to each other, in the kinetic molecular theory of gases, we say they, they do not interact. Now, here's the thing. In real life, we know they have to, to somehow interact with each other because a particle of gas, be it a, an atom or a molecule, consists of nuclei and electrons, and the electrons are on the outside. So basically, this particle of gas, whatever it is, um, on the outside, it's, it's a cloud of electrons. Electrons have negative electric charges, mm -hmm. and so they're going to they're gonna attract or repel each other. The nucleus here is going to attract the electrons here, and this nucleus will attract these electrons. But in the kinetic molecular theory of gases, we neglect that. And it ends up, it makes things really a lot simpler for us to do that. And surprisingly, surprising to me, it's actually a, a good approximation. It, it works really well. <clears throat> Third, <clears throat> these gas particles are really small, and the volume that they occupy is really small compared to the distance between them. So let's say there's two particles of gas, these little tiny dots. And this is not to scale. If this was to scale, you wouldn't even be able to see the dots. They're so much smaller than each other. But it gives you the idea is that if this is the volume of the gas, this circle, the volume that's occupied by the particles themselves is really small. And in the kinetic molecular theory of gases, we neglect that volume. We say it's like a gas is basically empty space. Even though we, we know there really are some particles in there, there has to be, but we neglect their volume. They don't, it doesn't make much difference. If we were to subtract out the volume of the gas particles themselves, the total volume would still be pretty much the same. Next, <clears throat> the fourth part of the kinetic molecular theory of gases says that these gas particles that are zooming around all the time are moving in straight lines until they hit something. And when they do, they bounce off and move in another straight line in a different direction. Now, what can they hit? Well, basically two things, either another particle of gas or the container, whatever it's in. And so if we have our, our balloon with helium atoms in it zooming around, they, they could hit each other. So if this particle is moving this way, hits this, this atom of helium, it's going to bounce off, and this is going to bounce off this way. Or they can hit the inside of the balloon. Now, the pressure inside of that balloon is caused by a lot of these particles hitting the inside of the balloon and bouncing off. When they do, they exert a pressure. And the pressure inside, it's the sum of all these little tiny pressures from all the little atoms hitting, hitting the inside of the balloon. Now, the fifth, the last part of the kinetic molecular theory of gas is really pretty cool. It says that the temperature of a gas in Kelvin <clears throat> is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy of the gas particles. So in this here, the, this symbol here means is proportional to. So the temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy. Well, what does that mean? 
means that, <clears throat> first of all, what's kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is related to the mass and the speed of the particles of gas. So if they're all the same um, particles, all helium atoms, let's, let's say, they have basically the same mass, but we've already talked about how they have different speeds, different velocities. So because they're moving at different speeds, they have different kinetic energies. Now, but they do have some average kinetic energy, and the temperature of that gas is proportional to that average kinetic energy. So the hotter that gas is, the higher the temperature, the higher the average kinetic energy. And what that means is the particles are moving faster. And this is really, at this point, what we take away from this. Hotter means, on average, faster moving particles. Colder means, on average, slower moving particles. So that's the kinetic molecular theory of gases. Um, it's, it's a really good picture to, to have in your mind, and it, it's going to be useful to fall back on as we get into some calculations in, in, this, in this topic.